What's up, this is Naked Eli, and what you're watching is probably something that has never happened, and who knows if it'll happen again. This is a perfection on the back of a mongoose. So for those unfamiliar with Halo, this is the weakest vehicle in the entire game. It's literally just like this little thing that drives you really quickly to a place, but if you drive past enemies, you're probably going to get lit up because there's no cover, no armaments on it. And as you can tell right here, I'm trying to kill this guy. Almost just screwed up my mongoose -ness perfection because I would have gotten a kill off the mongoose. And at the start of this, I obviously didn't think I was going to get a perfection. I was just like, puck it, I'm bored with regular matchmaking. Let's get some rockets and snipe and hop on a goose and let's just go kill some people. <laughs> so we were initially just screwing around. And then eventually, like, I get enough kills that I'm like, dude, I can get a perfection on this. And a perfection, of course, is in any Slayer game, you get at least 15 kills without dying. So it's sort of considered like a quote-unquote perfect game. And you'll notice I miss like all of my snipe shots on this mongoose. I'm a terrible mongoose sniper. I think this is probably the first time I've done it in Reach. And I know there's supposed to be like a little bit of a pull, a little bit of help when you're riding on vehicles. But there isn't really that much on a goose. And especially for me, I just like don't hit any of my shots off the start. I hit a few at the end. But for the most part, I'm just getting me some rocket kills. And these guys are probably very angry. Like a few of them quit. And then it just turns into hide and seek to see uh, if Puckett and I can find them and get enough kills towards the end of the game. And my teammates are obviously very good. These are my friends. Uh, Bellerophon was the leader of Revolution. Spadaro is probably the number one player in Mexico. And Vita is a good buddy of mine from you know many many months ago so we're just having fun and they're covering our back um, but really Puck is just <laughs> gonna be driving me around picking up the new ammo for snipe and rockets every three minutes and uh, you'll notice that I have to like drop the rockets a couple times so I'm looking for weapons to do that because of the runtime maximum it's really silly this is another reason why I like drop spawns is because if you're carrying a weapon then the new power weapon won't come up and that just like causes gameplay to slow down and I have to go what look for a weapon to drop instead of continuing to kill people like that's just silly and you'll notice Puckett's also one of the world's best drivers like the way he moves around this map is I'm completely confident for the most part <laughs> that he's gonna get me out of there safely that when I'm weak uh, he will keep me alive that when I have the weapons he knows how to push in and where to go um, so don't try this at home you know if you have just like your sister driving you or something because that would just be ridiculous okay here we go this is an example of me going and then I'm like where's the plasma pistol I'm, I'm waiting for it um, but it's not coming up and the rockets are gonna drop around 850 and you see here I'm looking to snipe someone off the mongoose like what are you doing Eli I thought you wanted your perfection on a mongoose Again, I didn't think I'd get it, and at this point, I'm just looking around for somebody to snipe. So anyways, that's enough of this. I'm going to run in here. I'm going to use the Needler uh, a couple times, and as soon as I drop that, the rockets will pop up in their designated spot. Okay, now let's move on to Halo 4, because there's a lot of new information that's been released in the past few days. More interviews with Kiki, the executive producer. Frankie wrote a ton of stuff on the Waypoint Weekly update. Wee! <laughs> and so I want to go over some of the new things or things that I didn't mention in my last video. So first thing that I was really excited about, and I tweeted about this, and I wrote about this on my Facebook, and everyone seemed really happy with the news, is the BR will have hit scan in Halo 4, which is awesome. If you don't know what hit scan is, uh, you can look it up on Wikipedia, but basically it means uh, if you're aiming at someone, there's no travel time. As soon as you release the trigger, your bullet will hit them. And this is much better for online play than a projectile system, which is the alternative that's like rockets, right? When you shoot a rocket, there's travel time for the rocket to hit. That's obviously a very slow travel time, um, but it's better than the BR in Halo 3, which had projectiles. So when it was laggy or anything, look at that terrible <laughs> rocket, completely missed. You know, in Halo 3, the, the projectile system, people didn't like it as much as the Halo 2 hit scan BR. So people are like, oh yay, the Halo 2 BR is back. So if you see any of that, comment. Check it out, I actually got a snipe. Like, <laughs> but have you seen any of those comments? That's what people are talking about, is it has hit scam. Uh, and so they said there will not be bloom, obviously. Uh, there will be a recoil, which is very slight. You know, it'll rise in a predictable and suppressible way. Um, and it's not a replacement for the DMR. So that means, uh, I'm guessing it's not going to have like the mega zoom in that the DMR has. And it's not just going to be a single shot. They said it's going to be a three-shot burst weapon. So this is fantastic. 
Um, Frankie also talked about the perks that I mentioned in my last video. So uh, he said they never used the word perks, and this is just something that the media has completely hyped up and over-exaggerated. Uh, and he said what it means is that there will be some customizations affecting gameplay, but you're not going to start off with like a power weapon like rockets and have some asymmetrical massive advantage over your opponent. You know, it's still going to be balanced. Um, I've had some of my users comment saying, you know, it might be that like you have a little bit extra jump height or a little bit of a faster sprint, things like that. And I could see how this could make Halo a little more interesting. I'm curious how the competitive community will take that because they don't even like having sprint in the game, you know. And so when you start tweaking things like player movement, um, that can actually have a drastic impact on the way that maps are played, whether you know one person can make a certain jump or another person can't, that will change how people move around the map. And we all know that, you know, where your position is on the map, the, there's certain power positions and that can drastically change the way that competition occurs, whether competition is interesting, uh, whether it's fair. So I'm curious how they're, I, you know, I know they've been talking to some MLG players. I don't know if they've actually used them in testing. Uh, and speaking of testing, there will not be a beta. Um, it's pretty sure, like I've, I've seen three separate comments and interview uh, points where uh, they haven't officially announced no beta, but they're like, yeah, that would drastically get in the way of our process and we it's not on our schedule. And so that's, that's just like a corporation's way of saying, yeah, we're not doing it basically. Uh, so that's, you know, unfortunate because I was really looking forward to a beta. Um, I was looking forward to getting uh, tons of that footage up on my channel and attracting new viewers who are excited for the launch of this new title. You know, a beta is not only something for players to give great input on, but it's also a massive advertising campaign. You're going to have tons of players, maybe even outside of the Halo universe, coming in to test out your beta. But I don't know, maybe because 343 is completely new to this, unlike where... You know, Bungie had been making games for years until they released the Halo 3 beta and then the Reach beta. So maybe Halo 5, I don't know, might have a beta when they have, um, you know, more of their stuff together. But this is just my guess that they're still very much working on the in-house product. They have internal testing. Um, I don't know what the scale is. They said it's pretty large scale. But um, I'm just hoping that, you know, the finished product comes out nicely and that they find all these glitches that their users would normally find in betas and things like that. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And in terms of the stage of development that they're at, <laughs> Frank said they're in crunch time. So they're finishing the levels, improving perf. I don't even know what that is. Someone explain it to me. I probably could look it up, but I'm not going to. <laughs> they're finishing gameplay, user interface. The campaign is playable from beginning to end. Cinematics are done. Music's composed with final orchestra sessions being booked. Um, they said the graphics are polished and beautiful, but there's still more testing and polishing going on. So I'm guessing at this point, people are still giving their input in the Halo 4 forums on Waypoint, saying, you know, I want this and I want this and I want this. And I'm guessing at this point, like, you should probably stop writing that because it looks like they're mostly done. They're just polishing the final product. And, um, you know, it's, it's cool for us to speculate and have an idea of what we want and maybe uh, give them some ideas for Halo 5 and whatnot. But... From this point forward, I'm pretty sure that they're not taking any more uh, feedback from the fans on what we want our Halo 4 to look like. I, I honestly don't know. I've never been uh, inside of a video game studio, but I'm guessing that they do look at the user feedback and say, okay, how can we integrate as much of this as possible or which of this jives with the way that we are building this game uh, and then they try to integrate it. But I'm guessing, like I said, at this point that uh, all that feedback has been taken into account, and we're going to be looking at the mostly finished product. And right here, going clutch, not really, but I <laughs> actually got a headshot with the sniper on the Mongoose. So excited, I have like one bullet left. Going to have to go get some new ammo soon. Okay, so more Halo 4 stuff. I've got like this huge list. Um, they said there's going to be lots of new guns, so I'm curious, what kinds of guns do you think we could actually look forward to or would balance Halo or where, I don't know, if you play other games, do you think Halo is lacking in the weapons department? I'm actually, I don't play any, any other shooters but Halo these days, so let me know what you think uh, Halo would like to see, you know, in terms of what's useful or fun or just would balance the gameplay some more. The default Slayer scoring, they said, will be different than the traditional 0-50 to 50 method of yore. 
And this, like, kicks me in the nostalgia groin a little bit. Like, I love the 0 to 50 system for Slayer, but uh, that's just because I'm used to it. And sure, if it's like 0 to 5,000 and you get 150 for a headshot and 100 points for a rocket kill, like, I don't know, this could make the gameplay a little more interesting. Maybe people will want to get headshots more and that'll cause players to become better at the game. I don't know, but I'm curious to see how that develops in Halo 4. Covenant's coming back. They said, although in a completely graphically, politically, and sonically overhauled form. So clearly this means like they're, sound, they're gonna sound different. Um, there's different political unions. So if you read Glasslands, like the Arbiter is, is pro-human, and but most of the rest of the elites hate the humans still. And so we're still probably gonna have some allies, but we're probably gonna be killing some Covenant. Um, and then they're gonna obviously look schmexier because Halo 4 just looks better than all the previous Halo games. It's literally, like I read an article about how it is completely using up every single ounce of your Xbox 360's power and everything to create the Halo 4 experience. So I'm actually really excited. Like that game, you know, it's imagine it's run on the same exact system as Halo 3, but compare the graphics we've seen so far with Halo 3 and it just blows it out of the water. Uh, so that's technology for you. Now the Cyclops being built in the middle of Warhouse, they said will not be playable unfortunately, but, and this is cool, they said we'll have some vehicle surprises, at least one of which will dwarf that weapon. Like, what does that even mean? Like, uh, what are we going to be able to drive? Some massive scarab or vulture? Like, uh, I don't know, but I'm really excited for the way that's going to turn out. Forge will be back, I'm hoping Theater will be too. Assassinations are making a comeback in an altered form. Uh, Spartan 4s, which, you know, Oni and um, Admiral Margaret Parangoski, I don't know if that's how you even say her name, but, you know, they activated the Spartan 4 program, and there's some reason why they're fighting and killing each other. So lots of exciting things to look forward to. And check it out, the Perfection Medal actually showed up in this theater clip. I don't know what that's all about. But that's uh, all my thoughts on Halo 4. Let me know what you think. Subscribe for more if you haven't already. This is Naked Eli. Thanks so much for watching.